right? Mm -hmm. We're on. Hi, Mifidar Center Poetry Gathering friends. This is Vince. This is Naomi. Welcoming you once again to our home for another edition of Medford Art Center Poetry Gatherings in August. This will be our fourth video in August, and we're actually going to go back to our original format. This video will include some words from local artists. We'll be celebrating artists born in the month of August. We'll end with some words of impact and some special words from Naomi. Please note that these videos will be posted on the Medford Art Center webpage. They'll also be posted on our YouTube channel, search for Medford Arts Poetry, and please subscribe to the Medford Arts Center YouTube channel. So let's begin with some words from local artists. Thank you. So as in the past, we have been reading haikus um, which we call vaikus from our, a group of friends who have been continuing to share with us their words in the forms of the vaiku. Uh, this is from Pat. Love at first sight, the face of the orchid unmasked. Thank you, Pat. From Sue. Tai Chi by the creek, water flows, I am at peace. Nature soothes again. Thank you, Sue. And from the Phantom Poet, jealous of the birds, huddled with friends eating snacks. They have it so good. Thank you, Phantom Poet. Thank you for sharing your words. Continue to write and send your poetry to us, and perhaps we'll read it during a, another poetry gathering. Now to artists born in the month of August. We'll begin with an artist born on August 8th, 1884 in St. Louis, Missouri. She was an American lyric poet, first published in 1907, and she became the winner of the first ever Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1918. Her poems have also inspired other artists, such as the composer Joseph Phibbs, the Irish musician Tony Wright, and author Ray Bradbury. This is Sarah Teasdale's The Answer. When I go back to earth and all my joyous body puts off the red and white that once had been so proud, if men should pass above with false and feeble pity, my dust will find a voice to answer them aloud. Be still, I am content. Take back your poor compassion. Joy was a flame in me too steady to destroy. Lithe as a bending reed, loving the storms that sway her, I found more joy in sorrow than you could find in joy. Sarah Teasdale. Our next artist was born August 11th, 1897 in Livermore Falls, Maine. She, in 1945, became the fourth Poet Laureate to the Library of Congress and was the first woman to ever hold that post. She wrote fiction and poetry criticism, and she regularly reviewed poetry for The New Yorker. This is Louise Bogan's The Alchemist. Thank you. The Alchemist. I burned my life that I might find a passion holy of the mind. Though thought divorced from eye and bone, ecstasy come to breath alone. I broke my life to seek relief from the flawed light of love and grief. With mounting beat the utter fire, charred existence and desire. It died low, ceased its sudden thresh. I had found on mysterious flesh, not the mind's avid substance still passionate Beyond the Will, The Alchemist. Louise Bogan. Our next artist was born August 9th, 1922 in Warwickshire, England. He was a novelist, librarian, and poet. And after graduating from Oxford in 1943, he began a 30-year career as a librarian. He disliked fame and had no patience for the trappings of the public literary life. 
His work is described as having a glum accuracy about emotions, places, and relationships. This is Philip Larkin's Money. Quarterly, is it? Money reproaches me. Why do you let me lie here wastefully? I am all you never had of goods and sex. You could get them still by writing a few checks. So I look at others, what they do with theirs. They certainly don't keep it upstairs. By now they have a second house and car and wife. Clearly money has something to do with life. In fact, they have a lot in common if you inquire. You can't put off being young until you retire. And however you bank your screw, the money you save won't in the end buy you more than a shave. I listen to money singing. It's like looking down from long French windows at a provincial town. The slums, the canal, the churches ornate and mad. In the evening sun, it is intensely sad. Philip Larkin. Our next artist was born August 29th, 1809, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Inventor, physician, polymath, and poet. He was amongst Boston's fireside poets. He had amongst his literary friends, Emerson, Longfellow, and Lowell, they would meet on Wednesday evenings and translate the works of Dante's Divine Comedy. He attended Harvard, where, along with the hasty putting theatricals, he was their poet and secretary. He was also the father of Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr. This is Oliver Wendell Holmes, Sr.'s contentment. Little I ask, my wants are few. I only wish a hut of stone. A very plain brown stone will do that I may call my own. And close at hand is such a one in yonder street that fronts the sun. Plain food is quite enough for me. Three courses are as good as ten. If nature can subsist on three, thank heaven for the three. Amen. I always thought cold victual nice. My choice would be vanilla ice. I care not much for gold or land. Give me a mortgage here and there. Some good bank stock, some note of hand, or trifling railroad share. I only ask that fortune send a little more than I shall spend. Honors are silly toys, I know, and titles are but empty names. I would perhaps be plenipo, but only near St. James. I'm very sure I should not care to fill our gubernator's chair. Jewels or baubles, tis a sin to care for such unfruitful things. One good-sized diamond in a pin, some not so large in rings. A ruby and a pearl or so will do for me, I laugh at show. My dame should dress in cheap attire, good heavy silks are never dear. I own perhaps I might desire some shawls of true cashmere, some marrowy crepes of china silk, like wrinkled skins on scalded milk. I would not have the horse I drive, so fast that folks must stop and stare. An easy gait, 245, suits me, I do not care. Perhaps for just a single spurt, some seconds less would do no hurt. Of pictures I should like to own, Titian's and Raphael's three or four. I love so much their style and tone, one turner and no more. A landscape foreground, golden dirt, the sunshine painted with a squirt. Of books but few, some fifty score, for daily use and bound for wear. The rest upon an upper floor, some little luxury there. A red Morocco's gilded gleam and vellum rich as country cream. Busts, cameos, gems, such things as these, which others often show for pride. I value for their power to please, and selfish churls deride. One Stradivarius, I confess, two meerschaums I would fain possess. Wealth's wasteful tricks I will not learn, nor ape the glittering upstart fool. 
Shall not carved tables serve my turn, but all must be of buell? Give grasping pomp its double share, I ask but one recumbent chair. Thus humble let me live and die, nor long for Midas's golden touch. If heaven more generous gifts deny, I shall not miss them much. Too grateful for the blessings lent of simple tastes and mind content. Oliver Wendell Holmes, Sr. And now for something a little different. Another artist, also born on August 29th, but in the year 1963. Born in Paramus, New Jersey, this artist in 1987 moved to Mount Laurel, in 1990 moved to Lumberton, and in 2017 moved to Medford, where at the urging of his muse, he entered a poetry contest. And the rest is history. During this pandemic, I have been thinking often of my childhood friends, those guys that I grew up with in Paramus. And I think of how blessed we are since then to have friends that we've went to school with, friends we work with, friends that are our neighbors. But that group of guys from Paramus has always occupied a very special place in my heart. And tonight I thought to seize the opportunity to celebrate them. I'm speaking of John Foytland, Phil Vogt, Tom Nebeling, Mike Reinhardt, and others. You know who you are. It was July of 1986. This would be the last full year that I would live in my childhood home. And I wrote these words. The diamond was our common ground. Shortstop, second base, and the pitcher's mound. Aluminum bats made a hell of a sound. It echoes from Petriska across to Morningside. Marathons and black 69s, Indian gut with three of a kind. Bozos and batteries were another time, but we never thought those times could die. John left first to fight the air and Phil moved next from here to there. We all tried to act like we didn't care, but the time left us alone. So we cruised the heights a few more times. Maximus guaranteed the perfect crime. The girls we met never seemed to mind, but we could never take them home. I stopped by Schlegel just the other day. The sign said members only, so I drove away. I wonder if the fish were biting that day, but that was so many years ago. Remember Parkway, Westbrook, and Cabbage Nights? Kill the guy, handball, and a girl named Height? You could count on a party every Friday night. But there was so much we didn't know. Now the kids are still playing down at DiMaggio. And just the other day, Phil's son turned two years old. Imagine the stories that little boy has been told about what it means to grow up in this town. About bicycles and backyards and shopping malls, sand pits, swimming pools, and wiffle balls, carnivals, fireworks, and the music that sometimes said it all. But that was then, and this is now. In his pocket, the prom picture is growing old. Remember the black Trans Am Tom has never sold? We all know Derry Barn will never really fold. But the time never did stand still. And now growing up seems just like yesterday. The good times and others we really shouldn't say. I wish I knew what John was doing today, but I guess I never will. Because John and Phil are married now. We stop by once in a while, but we're not really around. The people that have come and gone have changed this town. It's not the place I used to know. Now Tom and Mike are working hard. They're making plans to travel far. Those guys are a part of me. I know they are and I'll never let them go. The diamond was our common ground. Tonight I'll close with words of impact from Tom Shulman written in 1989. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. 
We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. And medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. Naomi? Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you, love. So, this month, as you know, we celebrated women being the given the right to vote. And we spoke about women who shared their passion with the world to create the world we have today. Well, I'd like to share with you a little bit about two women whose creation comes into your life at least once a year and which you hear at several events often throughout the year. These two sisters wrote songs and lyrics in 1895, but for an entirely different purpose than what we know it as, this particular song. You'll figure it out soon enough. Mildred Hill and Patty Smith Hill were sisters born in the late 1800s in Louisville, Kentucky. Both of them were raised in a household focused on the importance of education and advocating for the rights of others. Patty, a nursery school teacher and kindergarten teacher, and Mildred, a Sunday school teacher, was also a musician and composer. They wanted to create a way to welcome children into the classroom every day. So they combined their efforts and composed a song with these lyrics. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, dear children. Good morning to you. This was published as a song in 1893, and by about 1911, we were hearing those words, happy birthday, replacing the words good morning. In June of 1924, this song became the birthday song as we know it. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. In 1988, Warner Brothers became owners of the song, and they made millions in annual royalties, but in 2015, after several lawsuits, a U.S. judge determined that the Happy Birthday song would no longer be under copyright and would belong to the public. And I would encourage you to look into the fascinating history of this song, uh, especially in terms of all of the legalities involved in royalties between 1988 and the present day. Isn't it amazing? Here we have been witness to female artists whose passion carried into the present day, and we have not even touched in the last month of our segments uh, upon every single artist, poet, writer, and musician that has made such an impact. Here, Mildred Hill and Patti Smith Hill, two teachers composed a simple song based on perhaps other folk songs that they knew of in their history to welcome their children into a classroom and that song became a piece of music history, part of a lexicon of most people's annual celebration of life. Isn't that great? And this was all around the time of the 1920s, all about this, this period of time we're talking about women making such a difference. I also bring this up because this beautiful fellow sitting next to me is celebrating a birthday on August 29th, Saturday, this coming Saturday. So I wanted to take this time to wish him a very special birthday with a very special song and now some of you may recognize the voice now we have not uh we have not rehearsed this this was a surprise for vince so i love surprises we're going to see <laughs> we're going to see if this works and if it doesn't it won't be a surprise once we do this again so give technology me one second of course if you know vince you know that one of his favorite artists is frank sinatra ah. so here we go. I'm just going to this, just take a second. So we're going to wish Vince a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Lovest. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, wow. That's Frank. Oh, thank you. It's, it's a tradition on my birthday to have cheesecake, a glass of milk, and Frank Sinatra. 
Thank work. you, love. Well yeah, done. That work. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, happy birthday. I love you. I love you, too. So, uh, now I'd like to end with a few announcements. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate our friend Robert Spice for publishing two books recently. Uh, one is called When You Wish, a collection of short stories, and another is Flourish, a collection of poems. Uh, I plan to purchase these books and then I'll be able to show them to you the next time or at another point. And we, of course, will be reading some of his poems and some of his short stories as we move through the next few Well done, Robert. Months. Good job. So thanks. Keep it thanks up. for letting us know about that, Pam and Robert. Um, and while we have been sharing these videos with you on a weekly basis, uh, we now will be uploading these videos monthly. Uh, for the next several months. And uh, so please look on to our YouTube channel, the Medford Arts Poetry YouTube channel, and on the Medford Arts web website for updates. And uh, we hope you enjoy them. Please let us know that you are enjoying them. And if you have suggestions, or if you'd like to send in some of your poetry, please do so. And uh, we'll be happy to share it with the world. This year, uh, we're going to be having uh, hosting the 13th year of the Medford Arts Center Poetry Contest for Adults, and the third or this the third year uh, of the High School Students Poetry Contest. We've had a lot of fun in the past with these contests. Uh, in the past, they have been celebrated at the very end with an acknowledgement of the winners uh, in person in a in a wonderful celebration at the center. Uh, however, this year we will be changing it a little bit and we're planning to create an online celebration and contest, contest and celebration. So we're in the process of finalizing details, so please keep an eye out on the Medford Arts Facebook page, the Medford Arts web page, and on YouTube. We might even do a little segment with some a description of next steps for that. Probably uh, you'll see that around the second week of September and uh, we'll keep you posted. So please keep an eye out for this wonderful event. It's, it's again, it's been a lot of fun and it's how we came to create this. The this, poetry gathering. The poetry yeah. gathering. It all began with a contest. It all began with a contest. Would you like to tell everybody how that all started? No, because that way they'll stay tuned to September when we can tell them then. Okay, we'll tell them then. Okay. All right, so we hope you enjoyed this. Please See you stay, soon. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.